Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here. Today we're looking at Marvel Age Double Size Annual Number 1. Check out this freaking gorgeous cover by Carrie Gamil and Tom Morgan. So amazing. Cannot wait to share this with you guys today. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that like button and let's get right into it. Alright, Marvel Age was the Wizard Magazine, the comic scene, the... Um, People Magazine of the Marvel Universe telling all the events happening in the Marvel Universe previews of upcoming events, issues, uh, interviews with creators, behind the scenes, all kinds of fun stuff. So this was their first annual. I love Forbush Man in the corner box over here. Um, the conceit of this cover is that the editor asked Carrie Gamil to do a gigantic group shot um, well, maybe he didn't tell him it was going to be a group shot, but he asked him to do the cover and he said there would be no backgrounds. Hilarious, right? Look at this gobsmacking detail. George Perez, who, uh, Jeff Darrow, who, Darrow, rather, my bad. But look at how amazing this is. The art is just gorgeous. We have to take a minute to stop and look at this. And it's very telling of like the time of the history of the Marvel Universe. So we have Alpha Flight, but Aurora in her second generation costume. Um, there's previews for upcoming books, like there's like Mike Mignola art in here, there's like some amazing stuff happening, so you're definitely going to want to stick around, so all the more reason to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button, because you never know when I'm going to drop a gem like this, and I do have the hidden gems, fellas, and fellettes. Look at Rachel Ray Summers and Rachel Ray. <laughs> no, this is not the cook show, um host Rachel Ray. Oh, I hate a color faux pas like that. Look at Dagger's chest and light yellow. Bad box. Guardian. Um, Heather Hudson. Puck with not bare legs. I mean, this is very telling of the times, right, people? Uh, uh, who are these people? The Hyperion. Um, oh, gosh. You know, like Marvel's answer to the Justice League. The All-Star Squadron. Oh, my gosh. Devil's Dinosaur in the back. Cloak and Dagger. One of my favorites. Wizard, uh, the New Mutants, of course, looking amazingly epic. Carrie Gamil is just like such a great penciler, Beyonder, and his like um, totally dope armor looking there. Scarlet Witch, Vision, Fantastic Four, I mean, in their blue and white costumes, Mohawk Storm, uh, Mullet Sue. I mean, come on. <clears throat> Let's talk comic books, people. So, Marvel Age, look at that gorgeous pink. I feel like I'm already going to have a good time. Although, I do instantly notice that we are in the flexographic era and of color printing. And you can already see, like, the little flubs of it. It's just a really cheap, bad printing. Like, look how the black is, like, starting to lighten up a little bit. Um, apparently, when they got towards the end of their runs, the plates would run dry and turn gray and, like... Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths was a huge victim of this syndrome, and there are other books, um, historically speaking. So, you know, it's funny because Marvel Age feels like a book, like, why, you know, hey, hey Marvel, like, does somebody who organizes the Omnibus, or bring me on board as the Omnibus editor, because God knows, like, doing this shit for free all the time is, like, so annoying. So I feel like I have some practical use with my knowledge, information, and, you know, just sort of acumen. But, like, is is a Marvel Age Omnibus, like, a worthy thing? I kind of think it is. Like, it's a moment in history. And we got this. Like, this is beyond. Ha ha, beyonder. See what I did there? But um, Jim Shooter concept, Kurt Busiek script, I think we've heard his name before, James Fry pencils, Keith Williams inks, Rick Parker letters, and Glynis Oliver colors. It's a murderer's row of talent here. So then we're going to have like previews of the books going on in the Marvel Universe. And then we have a little preview of Secret Wars 2 here, which, have I covered that yet? I feel like I may have on some level, but I need to do more because I absolutely love it. Jim Shooter wrote it. Um, Al, Mil Al Milgram drew it and Steve Lealoha uh, inked it and I love Lealoha's inks and it was just like I know he had a mullet. I know it was kind of crazy but it was like a great concept and I feel like it would translate very well into a movie to be honest with you. So then we have the Uncanny X-Men but by Joe Duffy and Ron Friends and Dan Green. Well... Why? 
what happened in life that, that made that happen, that Chris Claremont isn't writing this? I mean, Joe Duffy does have a major association with the X-Men, so I guess she's welcome here. Chris Claremont was too busy, so Joe Duffy is doing The New Mutants. And this is, like, speaking of Steve Lee Aloha, amazing. Remember his three-issue arc? I covered it. Look, scroll through my backlogs, people. You're missing the greatest comic channel on the planet by not watching, subscribing, liking, blah, 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 my channel. Uh, Steve Lee Aloha, like a great post Sankovich fix, right? And then Sankovich came back to ink Mary Wilshire, which was very interesting. And I've covered some of that too. This isn't a plug for my channel, but then we have Doctor Strange written by Roger Stern with Sal Buscema art. And, um, if you're uh, a watcher of my channel, you know, I have like this, like I've had this reverence for Selby Sima forever, but I have a newfound like love obsession with his art. I think he's so great. I feel like he's one of those that the kayfabers would, um, annoyingly and unjustly, uh, label a jobber, but you know, he's just very prolific in my mind, to be honest with you. Can't knock a guy for wanting to make a living. Anyway, here we go. Alpha Flight by Bill Mantlo. Mike Mignola Pencils. This is a preview. It's so funny because uh, John Byrne... Like, this is such a big middle finger, screw you, and no kiss, no lube, kind of bend over John Byrne. Like, John Byrne wanted Hulk. Like, is there irony here? Okay, so John Byrne wanted Hulk. He basically forced uh, Bill Mantlo and Mike Mignola off the book. They switched creative teams. Those dudes went to Alpha Flight because John Byrne, despite all its major popularity, notoriously never had any affection for Alpha Flight. So annoying in my life. But, um, so then Bill Mantlo goes over. Uh, Byrne said he would never put Heather in the costume. That's like the first thing he did. And then he systematically, like, dismantled and destroyed the team, like, uh, irreparably. Like, I love Bill Mantlo as a writer, like, Cloak and Dagger, um, I guess Spider-Man. Like, I can't think of what else off the top of my head, probably Micronauts or something, but, um, like, Alpha Flight is unforgivable. I'm sorry. And for those of you who love the Bill Mantlo Alpha Flight, I apologize, but go fuck yourselves. Okay, so The Mighty Thor by Walt Simonson, script and art by John Workman Letters. I mean, come on, does it get any better than the Walt Simonson run on Thor? I mean, I feel like that was more my brother's thing, and um, I was enjoying it peripherally. I need to revisit it, explore it, deep dive into it. The art alone would be worth it to me, but I know the reverence for the mythos is, like, beyond Amazing Spider-Man Day by Tom DeFalco. Script, Ron Friends, Pencils, Joe Rubenstein, Inks. I mean, there is nothing wrong. Another jobber, Ron Friends, right? I guess Marvel House style for days. You know, sort of boring in a way, but sort of always giving and just like amazing and just like underrated at the same time. Squadron Supreme by Mark Grunwald. Okay, so... Oh, is this when it actually happened? You know, Brock, uh, Mark Runwald came out with this 12-issue maxi-series of Squadron Supreme, which is, like, highly revered. Mark Runwald is an amazing editor that people loved working with. He had m amazing contributions to the Marvel mythos. Uh, people still, like, just speak amazing things about him. And this is one of his, you know, signature series. And one of the crazy things about it is that when they printed, he had died, and when they did the trade paperback, um, they added his ashes to the ink uh, as per his request. It has not happened. I mean, you only have so many ashes, I guess, but, uh, you know, not in the subsequent reprints of that. So that's kind of a thing. That must be a collector's item, right? So here we have The Avengers by Roger Stern, like such a great like comic book writer, you know, uh, allied with John Byrne at times on Captain America and just like such a great voice in comic book history and just like w like a master of like a great Marvel story. Like he can write a Marvel comic book superhero story like few else can. So I guess this is tying into the Beyonder shit, I guess, because here we see the Beyonder crashing through Avengers Mansion. I love She-Hulk hanging out with her sunglasses and her bathing suit. 
with Wyatt. I love Wyatt Wangfoot. Um, Captain Marvel. This is, like, one of my, like, the weirdest, most random, like, Avengers lineups with, like, Black Knight and Hercules and... But, you know, I was living for it. And actually, John B. Seymour was the art, but we have Carrie Gamel's art here. And frick, I love Carrie Gamel. Like, amazing, right? So then we have the West Coast Avengers. This is when we're getting into, like, miniseries. The West Coast Avengers had a four-part miniseries, which was a smash success because people loved comics. The 80s were so great for comics at the time. Marvel was at the top of its game. They started doing miniseries and realizing the relevance and... Uh, monetary value in such series and you know it's a great way to sort of tell stories that might not be perfect for <clears throat> the regular monthly but then sometimes it was a great thing that spun out you know like um, more examples may come I don't know it depends on how it's my, my how my brain's working Devil Dinosaur by Kurt Busiac script, Richard Howell pencils. I don't remember if this ever came to be or what happened with Double Dinosaur. Um, I mean, who wouldn't love Double Dinosaur? Um, very much reminds me, my brother had this uh, model, like when I was young, <laughs> a thousand years ago, models were kind of a thing, which I always loved, but never had the patience or um, talent really for putting them together. But we did have this T-Rex, my brother, um, he was like totally red and his like nails, eyes and teeth were all white and very much looked like devil dinosaurs. So, I mean, what little boy doesn't love dinosaurs, sharks, apes, gorillas, blah, 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 aliens. Yeah, I, me, I did. I mean, so what if I like Barbie too? I mean, you know, can't we have both? Okay, so Dire Devil by Danny O'Neill script and David Mazzucchelli art. And oh my god, look at this gorgeous David Mazzucchelli art. Great silhouette there. I mean, definitive. Definitive. Like, one panel. That means he's still not back with his wife. Something he and I have in common. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. But very definitive art. Gorgeous. Love it. I sense that bird again. That one I encountered just after my fight with the vulture. Could it be Vulture's hench person bird? I don't know. Perhaps. Jeez. Yes. Oh my God. It's living. I love Cloak and Dagger by Bill Mantlo. Script. Rick Leonardi pencils and Terry Austin inks. Everything I just said makes me happier than you could possibly imagine. I was obsessed with Cloak and Dagger. Nobody could draw a Cloak and Dagger like Terry Austin and um, Rick Leonardi and just the beauty and magic and... Uh, choreography of it was just amazing and just like wow I just loved it so much like I feel like it's one of those things like you know like a certain creative team like did it best and like nobody else could do it better like I followed iterations after them and you know I mean I liked it to some varying degrees but do you agree I mean wasn't it always best by Leonardo and Austin and Mantlo so then we have Moon Knight by Alan Zalentis script War and Chris Warner art. Chris Warner art is amazing. Um, if you know Chris Warner, you know. Um, I feel like he's tied to like Dark Horse and sort of Predator kind of aliens. Maybe more Predator. I don't know. But anyway, just an amazing artist. Did some Moon Knight and just, I mean, it speaks for itself, right? So then we have the Fantastic Four. Oh my God, yes. I mean, what a great glimpse is this? Like, what a rare treasure. I feel like this is going to be a video that people are going to watch to the end because you're seeing, like, pages that do not exist anywhere else. You know what I mean? This isn't going to be in the Fantastic Four omnibus. This isn't going to be in a trade paperback. This is living right here in this horribly flex flexographic printed Marvel Age Annual, and it's gorgeous nonetheless. And I love that uh, they get a like a message on their answering machine while they're off being captured in one of my favorite tropes, um, characters under glass in little tubes. And this is when She-Hulk was on the team and Jerry Ordway was inking Burn, and it just looked so freaking beautiful. Then we have The Vision of Scarlet Witch by Steve Englehart, Richard Howell. There was like a maxi series, which I loved. I always loved The Vision of Scarlet Witch. It's better than the romance between the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, right? Then we have The Iron Man, The Iron Man, Invincible Iron Man by Denny O'Neill, Mark Bright, Ian Aiken, and 
Brian Garvey on inks. It's funny because Bob Layton was very much associated with like inking Mark Bright and I really loved it. But Ian Aiken and Brian Garvey are an amazing ink team. Um, and just, uh, once again, I think the art speaks for itself. How cool is this? Mark, uh, Captain America by Mark Renwald script, Paul Neary art. Paul Neary is very known for like inking Alan Davis on, uh, Captain Britain, perhaps, uh, maybe some X Factor. I think Detective Comics for sure, but, um, definitely an artist in his own right. Known for his run right here on Captain America. And, um, like, beautiful art, right? I don't have a problem with that at all. This is fun. I'm so glad I found this issue. Like, great, right? What a glimpse. Oh, my gosh, the gift that keeps giving. All these books I loved so much. Power Pack by Louis Samuelson script. June Bridgman pencils and Bob Wiechek inks. Bob Wiechek, one of the unsung heroes of inking. I feel like he was perfectly matched with June Bridgman. It's very much a light version of like what Paul Smith and Bob Wiechek did on the X-Men. And don't you see the compatibility with that? Love the art here. Love the series. It was so fun. It just one of those like magic moments that was never as good as it was in its initial iteration, of course. But oh, well, at least we have that. Then we have the Eternals by Peter Gillis script, Sal Buscema and Al Gordon art. Interesting. I've said before, and I say it again, like, the, one of the revelations of Sal Buscema is I think he's very uh, dependent and kind of beholden to the person who's inking him. And some people ink him way better than others. And I absolutely love Al Gordon's inks, and they look super terrific here. So, good on you. Oh, my gosh. And here we are. Imagine, at the same time, this is like a freaking lightning bolt of revelation. Now we have the freaking Hulk by John Byrne. Uh, script pencils, Bob Wiechek inks, which is interesting because Bob started inking Burn on it and then Burn took over, as he often does. Like, I feel like he inks himself when he has time to do it. And I'm always happy when he does. But I feel like I was always, like, okay with Bob Wiechek's inks, but always felt like they were slightly lackluster compared to someone like um, Terry Austin. However, I've since changed my opinion over the years. And especially looking at pencils, like if you particularly look at the original pencils for the f first few pages of uh, John Byrne's She-Hulk series, um, you can see how faithful Bob Wiechek was to the pencils. And I like super appreciate that about his inks. So it's interesting how over the years your perception, taste, and... Um, like, matures, I guess. Um, okay, so where were we? The Marvel Bullpen by Kurt Busiek. Script, James Fry pencils, and Keith Williams. James Fry, I like his art. You know, he, I feel, like, very sporadic. I'm not super familiar with his art. So I gave you enough time to read that gorgeous burn page. See, you're not going to get that in the Hulk omnibus or whatever. Um, Just fun. I mean, I don't know. Secret Wars was, like, so polarizing and looked at with such like laments but I freaking loved it I was like it was the heyday of comics for me and I, I was taking whatever Marvel was giving me at the time and I loved it and it holds up for me looking back at this I have nothing but warmness and nostalgia look at all these great comics Alpha Flight the second logo I mean do you remember the time Dazzla Paul Chadwick that was great when Paul Chadwick was on Dar Dazzler. Firestar by Mary Wilshire. G.I. Joe was here. I mean, Indiana Jones. Da da da. Conan. Conan the King. Hulk. Marvel fanfare. Long shot. Micronauts. Heyday much, guys. Rom. I mean, come on. And what? X Factor and X Man. Did we already pass the New Mutants? Yes. So we got three X titles, and that's it. Three X titles? Can you imagine a world where there's only three X titles? And a Star Comics preview. Look at that gorgeous Terry and the Pirates. Is that, or not Terry and the Pirates? Oh, yeah, Planet Terry, my bad. Ugh, Marvel goes Hollywood. G.I. Joe. 
What a great, great, oh my gosh, and that gorgeous Doom art on the last page. Thank you. That was so freaking bitching, right guys? How amazing. Double size, annual, Marvel Age. If you see this in the dollar bin, pick it up. It is so good. Look at this huge rip. It makes it breaks my heart. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button. I'll bring you more later.